have problem 3.52 here. It says use matched analysis to find I1, I2, I3 in the circuit of figure. Okay, so it's already driven, uh, drawn for us, so that's nice. And um, this is important to realize that when two mesh uh, when two or more meshes shares this one or more um, circuit, I mean circuit source, no, so what current source, then you combine these those meshes together and to form a super mesh, right? So I2 and I3 is going to form a super mesh. All right. So first we're going to start with I1 uh, right here. And uh, we're starting from bottom left corner, and it's going to give us negative 12V plus uh, 2 uh, two times I1 minus 2 times I2, and plus uh, 4 times I1, and 4 times minus 4 times I3. Okay, this whole thing gives you zero. What we're doing over here is use we're using the Christoph voltage law. And remember, we're using the Christoph voltage law. What that means is if this is negative and this is positive, then this has to be the other way around, right? We have to do this is negative and this is positive. Okay, it is important to know because we're using the Christoph current law, right? And we're doing the Ohm's law, then if it's interning from the negative, we don't have to use the negative Ohm's law, and so on and so forth. So the value will won't affect it, but if it's we're doing the Christoph voltage law, then the determinant, the terminal where the current enters, in assigned current enters, uh, will have a big impact. Excuse me. All right. So now let's look at IS, right? IS is I1 plus I3, I2, I plus I3 combined, right? Those two meshes. All right. So start from bottom, uh, top right corner. It doesn't matter where you start. Which is where I picked. So eight ohms, uh, eight times I two uh, plus two V naught, and then plus uh, four I three minus four I one, and then plus two I two and minus two I one. Okay, this whole thing gives you zero. All right, so let's uh, simplify this real quick. Right, so for I one, uh, I'll just write it from the bottom over here then. Um, so do we have a number? Yes, we have 12V, right? So I1 is 2I1 plus 4I1, so 6I1. 6I1 minus 2I2 minus 4I3. All right, you divide it by 2 by both sides. Uh, it's going to give you 6V, 3I1 minus I2 minus 2I3. Okay, and then this one. Oh, sorry. Let me just write it over here and you know which one we're dealing with. And then now we're doing IS again. Okay. So this one doesn't really have a number. Um, but, okay. So, all right. Before I simplify this, I think it's important to just mention this. That, all right. So we have I1, I2, and I3 and V0, right? V0 is, un, is, un, is an unknown. So therefore... We have two equations, uh, which means that's not enough, right? There are, un there are four unknowns, therefore we have to make four equations, independent equations, right? To be able to solve all the unknowns. This doesn't count, right? This depends on this, right? This, this is just another form of this. This doesn't count. We have to find two new independent uh, equations. And what is that? The first one is V0, right? What is V0? V0 is here. Right, it's literally uh, two ohm times well i one minus i two. Right, we can use that uh, in this. Right, we can use use this and then plug it back into here. Right, and now we got rid of one uh, unknown. Right, which is great because. Now we just have to write one more. And what's the next one? So when we're doing mesh analysis, we always use Christoph current law. But remember, there's one more very powerful law, and that is the Christoph uh, voltage law, the current law, right? Uh, which is, let's say this is not A, okay? Not A. So if we apply Christoph current law at not A, right, the amount of current entering equals the amount of current exiting, then you know I3 is entering, so I3. And then... Uh, sorry, 3A right here is entering, and then I3 is what? I3 is 
clockwise, right? So over here, it's turning, it's turning down. So it's leaving, right? So equals I3. And what is I2? I2 is clockwise as well. It's going to go from here, here, and it's entering that knot, right? So I3 equals I2 plus I, uh, 3A equals I3. So we can, I don't know, represent it or not. We can just say I3. We can just leave it like that for now. Uh, I3, right? Unless we need I2, then we just change it into I2 in terms of I3. Okay, so now we continue uh, our simplifications process, which is what we did over here. Um, so two, two I naught, right? That's gonna give us what? That's gonna give us, so if we plug in this, right, into here, then this, this equation is gonna give us something. So let's see, oh, sorry, all right. We're just going to go from here, I2, and then plus 2, so 4. So it's 4i1 minus 4i2, right? And then, well, we're out of space, so I'm going to just continue writing. Uh, plus 4i3 minus 4i1 plus 2i2 minus 2i1 give us 0. Okay, simplify this equation. I1, so one, there's one I1, two I1, so I1 is out. No, it's a negative two I1. I2, so eight, so four, and six. Okay, so plus six I2s, and then I3s. What's I3? There's only one I3, plus four I3. Voila, done, right? Okay, and the next thing is, we can totally apply uh, this equation over here, right, and, and add the I3 uh, into this equation, and then we have a uh, equation in terms of I1 and I2. Okay. So, all right, excuse me. So let's begin. Um, and let's begin simplifying them, right? So, negative 2i2 plus 6i2 plus 4 times i2 times 12 give us 0 okay so this whole thing give us negative 12 v right and then this is a negative let's see a negative 12 negative 2 so that's negative i plus 10i2 give us this right and uh, we divided by negative 2 by both sides, and remember it's negative 2, so this is i1 minus 5 i2 uh, plus 6v, right? So it's 6v plus 5 i2, that's going to give you uh, i1, okay? And now you have this equation over here, and then you can plug in i1 and i3 into this equation, right? So this is i3 plug into here right okay so let's simplify that equation so 3 is 18 v plus 15 i2 minus i2 minus 2 times i2 minus 6 v give us 6 v okay so this is 12 minus 18 or just say 12 12 minus so it's negative 6 v right negative 6 v and then I2 is uh, negative, is 12I2, right? Is that right? Uh, 15 minus 1 minus 2, that's 12. Okay, so I2 equals uh, negative 1 half uh, ampere, right? Negative 1 half ampere. Okay, so we got I2. Uh, we can find uh, what I3 is. So I2 which is the relationship is over here, right? So it's negative half ampere plus three ampere gives you I3, which is uh, 2.5 ampere, and that is I3. And then I1, the relationship is over here, which is uh, I1 equals six V plus five times I2. So five, so five times negative half, so minus 2.5, right? Minus 2.5. And that is going to give us 
5 ampere, which is I1. Okay, so let me just write it clearly, and then yeah, it's always good to write your work cleanly. Uh, it's easier for your professor to grade or your TA, so you have a lower chance of getting a wrong answer just because they can't find it, right? So 35 VA and then negative half A and then I3 is 2.5 ampere. Okay, and this is uh, how you solve your problem, right? This is how you solve this problem. So yeah, uh, always remember that after applying the mesh analysis, you might not have enough information, so therefore you have to Typically, you have to use Kirchhoff current law at nods uh, to draw conclusions uh, and draw uh, relationships and then find enough equations to solve all the unknowns, right? So over here, you can totally apply I3 into this equation and this equation, right? Both of these at the same time, and then find I1 and I2, and then use Gauss elimination from there, right? Two equations, two unknowns, because you will have I1, I2, and I3 is in terms of I2, and here's I1, I2, I3 in terms of I2. So just be I1 and I2, right, in both equations. So yeah, there's so many ways of uh, solving this. You can obviously, you can also use uh, matrices. Uh, if you have a calculator, it's a lot easier that way. So yeah, uh, hopefully this was helpful. Uh, good luck on your studies, and I'll see you in my future videos. Bye.